Okay. You may or may not have realized that my previous video is no longer available to see. I think if you read the title of this video, along with what I just said, you may be able to figure out why you can't see the video. <laughs> Look, I don't like getting banned from places. I think I've probably been banned from too many places at this point. I know what you're thinking. When will you learn your lesson? Yes. I mean, I try I try not to show anything sensitive, ever. I just, it's just me, my job, what I do. There are literally thousands of people there on, on site already. Anyway, I'm just, yeah. I want to apologise. And this is genuine. I want to apologise to the people we did the work for. Um, last thing I want is to get anyone in trouble. Me getting in trouble, whatever, I don't care. Other people we're doing the work for, that's a different thing. So apologies to them. Apologies to my viewers who haven't seen the video. Um, only half of it really consisted of of the festival footage itself, um, but I decided to remove the entire video. This particular video you're about to watch, now it did originally have some footage of it in there, and I talk about it. Um, so the festival will be mentioned in this video at some point, I would have thought. But the seven, the seven minutes worth or was it that way around that way the seven minutes worth of footage that was in this video originally has now been taken out and kind of replaced with this intro although this intro is not seven minutes um but there is no footage of the festival in this video other than this background which by the way is a generic google background can be found on google i never took it I'm in my office. It's it's magic. Um, it's not real. Uh, let's just keep it off. <laughs> so yeah. Um, apologies to the people we're doing the work for. Apologies to the viewers. Apologies to the people at the place that have banned me. I am sorry. I didn't mean to get banned. Didn't mean to show anything sensitive. I'm pretty sure I didn't show anything sensitive. Um, but yeah. I'm sorry. Anyway, onwards with the video. So I've just been told, my wife's here, I've just been told. You can't see me, it's fine, no, no, no one see me. No one can see me. I've just been told that I should say it was a media blackout, it wasn't my fault. You did nothing wrong, it's just a media blackout. Um, filming. There were no signs, sorry, it's my daughter, there were no signs on the way in to say no photography. Like there wasn't years past, but there was nothing this year. I made made a point of checking that there was no media signs. Oh, sorry. Let's crack on the video. My daughter's dancing behind the monitor. <laughs> You're laughing. Start the video, start the video. This video is sponsored by Avail. Are you a HGV driver looking for a job? If so, then create and log into the Avail app and start looking for work. Want to know more? Then download the Avail app today. Morning, everyone. Just walking to the bin. Put some rubbish in the bin where we parked up last night. Let me show you. We're down there somewhere. Yeah, we just, uh, just walked to the bin, put some rubbish in the bin. We are down here, the one with the lights on. We're just going to do some daily checks now, make sure everything's all okay with the truck. I'm sure it will be. We've stayed at uh, Portbury Docks. I think it's called something West Road. I can't remember. <laughs> I'm still, still waking up, doing my checks and all that. But yeah, here she is. Here's the truck. So we've got two units on the front. They are secure with two straps each. One, two, three, four. And then we've also got a container on the back. There's no straps holding that one down. Reason being is they are held down by twist locks, as you can see in there. Under the trailer, we've got twist locks. They go, the twist locks go all the way down the length of the trailer at various intervals. Look, there's one there that's not being used. There's two here, not being used. And it's secured on the back one. So that's why there's no, uh, there's no straps on the back of the container. 
I see questions like that being asked a lot. How come that lorry's got no straps on those containers? Well, twist locks, that's why. It's for years. Now we're taking this, we're taking this lot to Glastonbury Festival. Uh, from Glastonbury Festival, hopefully we're not gonna be there too long. Uh, we're aiming to be there for eight o'clock. It's six o'clock in the morning right now. Um, so we are, we're not running late or anything like that. We're still, we're still ahead of time. Um, from Glastonbury Festival, we've got to go down to Exmouth, do a delivery to Exeter, then back to Exmouth, then to Wooten Bassett. So that's what we've got to do today. So we'll have three different loads on. Yeah, three loads. And that's going to be in, uh, in today's video. Anyway, everything looks good with the truck, so we're going to jump on in, do some more, uh, some paperwork, and then crack on. The Royal Marines Commando. That's where we are, if you're around this Exmouth area. Um, yes, we're on the A376 Exmouth Road, heading to our collection point. Plans have changed. Um, so we were originally supposed to be getting loaded and then going somewhere in Exeter. I <laughs> get confused. And then come back to Exmouth and then go to Wimbasset. Wow, turns out we're behind schedule, we're delayed, not my fault. Um, just various stuff that's happened over the last couple of days waiting on sites, waiting for people to tell us where stuff has to go before things are taken off the lorry, then get into the other place and the, the forklift that was supposed to load me got in an accident. It's one of those forklifts that go on the road. Got involved in an accident on the road. <laughs> it's in my last video. That forklift that we saw, we followed behind in my last video. Well, it turns out uh, shortly after that, it had an accident on the road and the forklifts broke, basically. It had an accident and wrote a car off. <laughs> <laughs> probably shouldn't have said that never mind well i have um so um yeah because that was the only road worthy forklift they had road legal um they got no other forklifts that could load me from the other yard it just so happened that my other stuff was in the other yard so i had to wait for another driver to come to load me with the high up crane so that put me behind by an hour or two and then it, by the time we got down to portby docks yesterday where um where i stayed during the night where I started this video. Uh, by the time we got to Portway Dogs, it was like six o'clock, half past six at night, something like that. Still still over an hour away to Glastonbury at that point. Um, so we wouldn't have got to Glastonbury until way past seven o'clock. Um, I think the driver who was behind me did go down to Glastonbury, but again, he didn't tip anything until this morning. So we were told that they wanted it off yesterday, but in the end they decided, no, it's too late, we'll do it in the morning. So, because we've had to wait until this morning, and I didn't leave until half past nine-ish, like quarter to 10, um, we're behind. If you're gonna just reverse into the road, mate, you're kind of forcing me to stop here. Uh, so we're behind by half a day. So rather than do the two runs, uh, they've decided to get me just to do the one run which means another driver has had to pick up my slack um, and, and basically do, do three runs rather than two runs. We're supposed to do two runs each. So yeah, um, slightly frustrating for the other driver. Means I've got an easier day. Well, it doesn't mean I've got an easier day because once I've already spoken to Kieran and once we're tipped and we're in Bassett later, depending on the time, um, we will be loading for Monday morning, be it out of B-Right Sawmills or out of Tetbury, one or the other. So. I don't know. I estimate we'd be empty around three-ish, so we should have time, plenty of time to go and do it. Um, but we just have to wait and see. We're only a couple of miles away now from our collection point. We're only five minutes away, give or take. So um, yeah, we'll be there momentarily. Yeah, I know where we are. So yeah, when we went on holiday, me and my wife and the kids, I got fuel from this fuel station on the way back out, on the way back home. Um, we come out on one of these roads on the left. We are going to be turning down one of these roads on the left as well. Looking on the map, I'm hoping, I don't think we're going to have an overhang. I don't know. Uh, I think I think the lady who I spoke to just now in the office said, I think she said I got a 32 foot and some steps. So there could be a potential overhang on the steps, maybe. I'm not sure. Um, but in about half a mile's time, just over, we got to, we got to take a left-hand turn. But to get it back out, Obviously, come back out that way. It's going to be a right-hand turn. And it looks like it could be quite tight um, because of the road layout with the chicanes in the middle of the road and whatnot. I can see the sea. 
The sea is directly ahead of us. That is the sea. The sea's to the right of us as well. <laughs> well yeah, we do like coming down here. Oh, road closed. Yeah, um, the road we're about to take as well. Um, well, not about to take. When we get there, it's, it's a closed road. But apparently there's, there's enough room to get through the cones. So, this is good. This is good. I'm pretty sure to go to the holiday park we go to, we normally take a left here or something, one of these lefts. We head that way a bit more. Lovely weather. It was, um, it's 15 degrees now. Earlier it was quite cold at, uh, at Glastonbury. It's supposed to be a really hot day today, um, but yeah, this, this morning, early this morning, it was really quite cold. I also, th I think there's a big massive crane on site that's going to be craning it onto us on the trailer. I think that's what's loading us. So yeah, we are taking a left here onto Gypsy Lane. I just think, coming out, as you know, it's not this left, it's the next one, at the traffic lights. I just think coming out could be a bit snug. Uh, might be all right. Yeah, coming out. Yeah, definitely got to take it wide. Coming out of here. Got a bin lorry stopped. Have a bin lorry, make sure it's all clear. Lovely, and then it's the next right hand turn, I believe. Or the second one. It's Exmouth Community College we're picking up from. Ah, yeah, here we go. So, yeah, there's signs here that saying road closed. But we should be able to just make it. Yeah. No problemo. Are you crossing? No? And then we're taking a right into here. Bam deliveries. Ooh, it's a bit slunk. It's a two way traffic. It's a bit tight. I've been told to just drive down here, follow the road all the way down, spin round and reverse back, much like what that lorry's doing up there by the looks of it. Oh, it's a JK truck. Used to work for them. <laughs> <coughs> Is that Terry? It's Terry, I know Terry. I know Terry. We used to work together. Terry's a good lad. He um, he come to my dad's birthday um, celebrations as well. My dad turned 50 um, a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago now actually. And uh, Terry came and uh, celebrated my dad's 50th with us as well in the pub. Let's go say hello to him. See you in a bit. Okay, this is the part of the video where we talk about the Essential New Truckers Handbook by Malcolm Green. I promise you, if you want to know anything regarding HTVs or, or working hours or anything like that, then you need to purchase this book because everything is in it. Uh, and if you are already a HTV driver and you think you already know about all this sort of stuff, buy it anyway because it's going to refine your existing skills. The Essential New Truckers Handbook by Malcolm Green. Link in the description down below. Go buy yourself a copy now. Oh, I just spoken to Terry. Look, you can see the crane that's going to be lifting it off. Um, yeah, so we're going to drive in here, go round there, and then sort of park it here in the middle. Terry can go round us, and then get on out. 
But yeah, good lad, Terry. Good lad. We, uh, that's what I like about the trucking community. Sort of, everyone knows everyone. Do you know what I mean, you just go say hello and have a little chat. You all right, mate? How's it going? Doing something like that. But yeah, let's go get lined up. Right, I can come off for now. Let's go and get ourselves lined up. Got a nice little bar barriers here, look, to squeeze past. And we'll drive down here. Mind the hoop. No dunking today. Mind the shelter. then use the handbrake as a bit of a clutch if you time it right but I mind this shelter look there we go let's mind the shelter now we can get lined up So once you're in here, there's plenty of room. Just got to uh, give Terry enough room to swing round me. There we go. We're at an angle now where we can reverse back to where he is. I think he can get round me. And then as he comes to the side, I can go back and he can cut across. Bit of synchronisation between us. Right, in the meantime, I need to put a postcode into the sat <gasps> to where it's going. Right, Terry is coming out. As he goes past me, I shall reverse back a bit. Probably put my, uh, my ardour on before I forget it as well. So I will forget it. He hasn't strapped up yet, so I guess he's strapping up in here. I'm not going to catch that, I don't think, am I? Yeah, I am. Lovely, we are in. In one go, no shunting. <laughs> hey. Um, right, let's go see what the crack is. Where is he strapping up then? Maybe out there, I don't know. Right, see you in a bit. Okay, here we go then, it's going on now. It's gonna go on the headboard. And then um, we've got those two steps to take as well. Happy days. Okay, we are loaded. So we decided to put six straps on this. Uh, I was going to put three on to begin with, but they said no, because it wobbles or something, so they said four would be enough, so I put six on to be safe, and on the back end we've got steps, got one strap pulling this way, one the other way, and uh, of course we've got the overhang with the uh, high vis on, lovely. Okay, so uh, that's what we look like, let's get going. Right, aircon on. Like I said, we are loaded. <coughs> um, before we go, don't need this on. Don't know why I'm still wearing it. A 
lovely right let's get out of here before another <laughs> before another lorry tries to come in because uh, it is only room for one truck at a time and it is two directional traffic let's get out of here I'm hoping he's going to move. Well, I think he's moving now. Lovely. Thank you, mate. You always got to say thank you to people. No matter how big or small of a job they're doing for you, always say thank you. Clear left, clear right. Lovely jubbly. Yeah, so we're on our way now to Bassett. I do need to stop for a break on the way up. So by the time we stop for a break, we are looking, by the time we get this tipped, it could be like half past three. Um, <laughs> everyone at that bus stop was having a good look then as I went past. Um, yeah, thank you mate. He's giving me some room. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, we are on our way back. It's this right hand turn coming up. Well, not this one. The one after this one coming up, which is the one that's given me some concern. He stopped there and I can't get around that corner with him there. Well, I don't understand why, well, yeah, there's a bin there, so. It's all clear for me. I've got a tail swing and he's still on the corner. There we go. Okay, we're still on the corner. <laughs> He moved back, but it's still quite tight where he was. Um, as I turn right, I can't see, but the, obviously there's an overhang. There's going to be a tail swing. I don't want to take him out. <laughs> so that's why I went nice and slow, so he could honk his horn if I, uh, if I was getting too close. Right, yeah, so it's this right-hand turn I was slightly worried about. Again, as I turn right, the overswing on the back of the trailer could take out the traffic lights on the left. That is what I am worried about. Should be right. I can't really go yet because there's nowhere for me to stop at the top. Right, green light, we can go. So, I mean, it's a red light, I could have gone, but if traffic come downwards, I would have been stopping them. It's been nice to see if we can get up here now and change again. No, <laughs> no, we can't. So, yeah, as I turn right, I've got to take it wide to avoid the thing in the middle of the road, but also, as I turn, I'm going to get very close to the barrier as well, actually, on the left. So, I've got to sort of go forward, turn left, get a nice tight turn, and they've got, to miss, <laughs> they've got to miss the green sign on the opposite side of the road on the left front of the trailer as well. There's, there's obstacles all over here to watch out for. <laughs> um, should be all right. Green light. Cool, right, so let's do this. Watch the sign. There we go, done. 
with rain. And that's their Bevins. Oh, he's calling me. All right, mate, I'll catch you in a bit. All right, see you later, mate. Bye-bye. Yeah, so that was um, the guys we're doing the work for. <laughs> Base, oh, yeah, that was the fuel station we come, I come out of last time. Um, yeah, so he's the last one back to do, to do the last run, but he was expecting to see a couple of guys before he come back, and he'd just seen me, so he thought maybe there was a hold-up somewhere, so I don't know. I, I got loaded as soon as I could, and um, Terry, who got loaded before me, I've, I've actually overtaken him. He was still strapping up, so I've managed to strap up. I've managed to get loaded after him and strap up, and I've gone before him. I don't hang about. I, I crack on with things. I crack on with things. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we're going to make our way back to Wooden Bassa. Like I said, I do need to stop for a break on the way up. We're on two hours and ten minutes driving, which means we've got two hours and twenty minutes remaining before we need a break. And I'm two hours forty-five away. So, yeah, we will need to stop for a break. It could be quite close to Bassett, or we can stop anywhere we want, really. Don't really matter. And uh, it won't be an issue won't be an issue but yeah i'm going to crack on thank you mate and uh get on up to uh to what i'll see you in a bit right we are in sedgemore services we just pulled in for a 30 minute break we got absolutely <laughs> i don't know what's the word screwed by traffic on the m5 it's a nightmare at one point it was coming up saying well over an hour's worth of traffic um we were supposed to be not supposed to be, but we were planned to be, or expecting to be, I think it's a better word, to be in Wooten Bassett for about three o'clock when I left, I think, something like that. Well, right now it's 10 to four, <laughs> and I still need to have another 15 minutes on my break, so it's gonna be like well after four o'clock. So yeah, we've been delayed by well over an hour. Um, it does mean that once we tipped, the good news is once we're tipped, we're done, we go straight back to the yard, nothing else to do. The bad news is we have to start early Monday morning, just spoke to Kieran. And he's suggesting a half past five start. And I'm like, oh, 5.30. Do I want to be starting at 5.30 on a Monday? No, I do not. <laughs> so yeah, we're just uh, we're just sat here for now. There was no space in the lorry part for us over there. So we've come over here, drove forward, reverse back. We do have um, camper van that side. We have ambulance that side. We've got a bit of an overswing. So when we go, we just go straight forward and uh, eliminate the overswing as much as possible basically but yeah there's still there's still traffic in front of me as well another 20 minutes worth of traffic pretty much like i said i let ETA, <laughs> ETA has just gone up eta is now uh five to four and we still need another 13 hours driver uh, sorry 13 minute break so yeah we're, we're looking at being there for about quarter past four give or take hopefully they're still open at half past uh, sorry quarter past four fingers crossed there's nothing we can do about it um I suppose if they are shut, we just take it back to the yard and someone else to deliver it Monday. Um, but fingers crossed we can get off today. Okay, you join me going through, or just about to go through, Wooden Bassett High Street. This is my hometown. This is where um, I lived my most of my childhood. Um, yeah, I lived here until I was about 10 or 11 years old. Went to primary schools here made friends here went out and about here my god <laughs> if my daughter my eldest daughter who is currently 10 years old got up to the stuff that i got up to when i was 10 years old i would hit the roof i was an absolute nightmare when i was 10 years old we lived we lived uh, sort of that direction a bit more i mean where we are now is probably a good two or three miles away two, two miles I would say, from where we lived. And I would walk about, I would cycle, go all over the place. At 10 years old, man. My, <laughs> I get rid of my current 10 year old walks to school, which is half a mile away. Um, and we're in a village. This is a, this is a town with lots of people. Uh, I got up to so much stuff when I was 10 years old. Mostly trouble, actually. Uh, most, to be honest, most of the stuff I got up to, I'm a little bit ashamed of, to be honest with you. I was a right troublemaker. I would, be, I would be bitterly upset if my 10-year-old got up to the stuff that I got up to when I was 10. But yeah, Wooten Bassett, as I call it, Wooten Bassett, or 
as the locals used to call it, Bassett. My hometown wasn't royal when I lived here, now it is. Although it was made royal shortly after um, I worked at the post office, um, which I got fired from. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I was, I was, I, I left Wharton Bassett when I was about 11 years old. We went and lived in Lydid Millicent, but I still went to Bassett school. So I was in Bassett every day as a kid growing up, even, even up until the age of like 18, 19. And my girlfriend at the time lived in Bassett, so I was always here in Bassett. It was where I was brought up. It is my hometown. Um, yeah. Lots of memories here in Bassett. Lots of memories. Anyway, we're not too far away now. That's an amber light we can get through. Not too far away. We're only half a mile away from our delivery point. Um, once we get this off, we are done. Done for the day. We'll be heading straight back to the yard. That's a bit tight down there, mate, for a truck. Very tight. I think the five arms is down there. There's a club here on the right-hand side we always used to go to as a kid. Uh, when I was a kid, my mum and dad always used to go down here. We used to walk. Yeah. Back in the days when your mum could write you a letter and you'd get served cigarettes at the, uh, at the local shop. Now, how many of you are coming up? Because it is my right of way coming down. Thank you very much. Just like indicating right, because we want to turn right. I'm t mate, I'm indicating, come on. Come on. Get around this corner. Yeah. It's a bit snug around here. We need the other side of the road to get around this bend. It's the red car stops up here, right? Lovely. Thank you very much. And then it's somewhere down here. I'm not entirely sure where it is, to be honest with you. Somewhere around here. I hope I can find it. <laughs> I think it's on the left, I think. I might have to stop and just double check on the map where it is. Yeah, overtake mate, that's it. So I've just had to find it on my phone. I didn't want to go down here if it was in here, because then that's a dodgy reverse back. Yeah, we're just, uh, we're just going down here. Oh, I can see the port cabins now. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't sure it was in there or not. I just put the postcode in. I knew it was down here somewhere. <laughs> that was poor planning. Should have checked a bit more than that. Um, so, yeah. Just here on the left. I just got a phone call from the guys we're doing the work for. The M5's buggered, as I said earlier. Uh, and he's just double-checking how I can get it off. Uh, do we need a hard hat? Nothing about hard hat on the sign. Let's go press the puzzle. Now, where are we actually stopping here? I do not know. I think I've been here before, but I can't remember. It says drop off point here. So I'm going to hazard a guess that I stay here and they uh, come and pick it up from the side. I'm going to hazard that as a guess. Anyway, I'm going to do the straps. Go do that at least. See you in a bit. Right, we're actually in a bit of a bother. Uh, we've taken off all the straps and um, there's no fork holes, so we can't get them fork lifted off, which means they've got to be craned off. But there's no cranes. So yeah. Yeah, so there's no fork holes this side lit either, or on the other side. So um, it has to be craned off with a, with, with a well, it got craned on, it needs to be taken off with a high ab. Either one of their trucks would do it, or the Bevan's truck, which is still about 45 minutes away, will come and sort it out. We're not quite sure which one yet. Either way, we're sat here for a little bit. Oh, there's an airplane up. 
Either way, we're sat here for a little bit um, until someone is willing to take it off, basically. Um, not quite foot down Friday. Right, we're just reversing back now to get this off. Our high up has arrived. It is now quarter past five. It's a little bit later than we uh, thought it would be. But we're here nonetheless. Do you want me to drive off? Sorry. Yeah, go on, off you go. Right. Sorry to uh, make your day a bit longer. May it end your fault. Nobody's fault. Just got to today. <laughs> right, have a good weekend, mate. Yeah, thank you, bud. <clears throat> Let's get out of here. Fortlift coming around. See you later. It very nearly didn't lift it off. It very nearly didn't lift it off. Heavy. Get close to him. All right. See you there, mate. Right, we're off. We just need. Hopefully, someone. Can, <laughs> hopefully, someone can open the gate for us now. Then they've not all gone in. That'd be nice. It's a very dusty yard. Oh, the gate's open. Look, look at that. Bang tidy. Let's just get out of the gates before they shut. And I'm going to take off my high vs Don't know where Rob is. Bob was loaded behind us, behind me, and he ain't turned up. Unless he's got here before me, that is possible. Because like I said, I did stop for a break. Right, let's take the ivies off. Yeah, I did stop for a break, so... Uh, there is a possible chance that he got tipped uh, before I arrived. There is that chance. But yeah, we are done. What way are we going to go home? That's the question. We've got to go to junction uh, 16 regardless. Uh, but do we cut through Swindon or do we go around? That is the question. This truck needs to have a clean because I can see dust on my sat nav. On the sat nav screen. Um, yeah, so I don't know which way we're going to go home yet. We've got to go to junction 16 either way. Back to the yard, I mean. Tempted to cut through Swindon, but also it's 20 past five, so maybe not the wisest idea. Uh, we'll see whether the TomTom Tom traffic updates me with uh, any traffic information before I get there and make a choice. Getting out of here is going to be awkward. It's all clear. This hill is quite annoying. It's always been annoying, this hill, because you've got Part vehicles on the left. Don't know why they should have banned that ages ago. No part vehicles on this road, I believe. Should it be? And then any vehicles going up the hill can just go straight up. That's what it should be. Hmm. Recognise that driver of the car then. Think she was an ex. <laughs> So, <laughs> sorry if my wife is listening. My wife listens to uh, all my videos while she sleeps. So they send her to sleep. That's how, uh, that's how interesting they are for her. But yeah, I think that was an ex. <laughs> an ex-girlfriend. Yeah, man. That's it. Loads of memories. Uncle got buried there. Now, Oscar's Grill, are they still here? Oscar's Grill did at the time. I don't know what they are now. At the time, they were like the best kebabs ever. Shout out to Oscar's Grill. That used to be like a summer fields back in the day. My mum, my mum's waters broke 
in there when it was called Summerfields. It was like loads of memories around this place. This road's recently been tarmacked. Coming soon, RWB auctions. It's going to be an auction house? Next to an antique shop, so, hmm, don't know. There's the post office I used to work at. Oh, yeah. There's Oscar's Grill on the right. Shout out Oscar's Grill. <laughs> they made the best kebabs when I was a kid. And then down here, by these traffic lights somewhere, um, Bassett Bakery. As a kid, I always used to remember my, my mum buying me a, a ham salad roll. It used to be like the bee's knees at the time. Is it still there behind the bus? Number 55 bus. That's it, bakery. Yeah, man. Uh, the number 55 bus, my now wife at the time, used to get the bus back to Chippenham because that's where she's from. And we, yeah, it's quite cool. We used to drop her off here. She used to get the bus back. And then, uh, yeah, just lots of memories. My nan used to live up there before she died. Yeah, my hometown, that's it is. For those of you who didn't know, sorry, I'm just slightly reminiscing. Slightly reminiscing. I used to have a pimped out red Vauxhall Corsa with Go Faster stripes on it. I remember being in this fuel station here on the right, and someone telling me the police were looking for me, for various reasons. And the police station is here, or at least was, I don't know if it still is. I think uh, GWR used to be based here as well. It used to be a radio station, which become Heart Radio. It used to be called GWR, I believe. And that was that operated out of Bassett, as far as I remember. But yeah. Used to walk to school, the secondary school. Go up here, down there. No, I didn't used to walk to secondary school because I got the bus from Liddy's Minister. But when I went around mate's house, I used to walk backwards and forwards. Anyway, I'm proper reminiscing. I, um, we were very close, me and my wife, to purchasing a house in Bassett. It was, one, it was on the short list of places to move to. Uh, so was Swindon, but we decided we didn't really want to move to Swindon. Bassett was definitely um, an option because it was close, in, it was in between both families, so that's ideal. I went to Bassett School, which is apparently it's a really top rated school now, or in Bassett. Uh, rated outstanding, do I mean by Ofsted as well? So yeah, it used to be really. The Royal? They used to be called Prince of Wales. They renamed it? That used to be called the Prince of Wales. When was that changed to the Royal? Mm. Never mind. And ordinarily, we would go left to go back to the yard. Towards, um, sort of like, Crick Lane, Malmesby Way. You go left? Yeah. Like I said, we've got to go to the motorway and either go through Swindon or go around. And these are all new. Mm. This is what happens when you don't go through Bassett for a while. <laughs> Things change. Things change. Never mind. Anyway, that is going to be the end of today's video. Thank you ever so much for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Um, like I said, I do appreciate you watching. Um, woke up in Portbury this morning, just opposite the docks. Drove to Glastonbury. Was there for a couple of hours and we went down to Exmouth. Picked up from there and dropped off here. Um, the day itself hasn't been hard, it's been an easy day. This this works easy, don't get me wrong. It's, um, you just gotta be a bit wary on, on your vehicle dimensions because you are wide either side and they're slightly long as well with an overhang, so. Just gotta be careful on them things. Uh, apart from that, it's, uh, it's good work, I quite enjoy it. I do quite enjoy it. But next week I'm doing something else, I'm off of this work, so uh, yeah. Why are there so many Mazda Red Dead Mazdas in there? What? It was like, Ten or, ten or so bloody red Mazda MX-5s in there. Donny would love that, truck of Donny. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, until next time, drive safe, stay safe. I will see you soon. Thank you once again for watching. See you next time.